Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with Nate. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, kit bashing or customized miniatures. For Nerdcraft. For Nerdcraft. And, you know, what, what we have on, on the table here is just some of the stuff that is either a raw material or something that, you know, I've, I've personally made. Um, so when you're going to get into this kind of stuff, your first, uh, your first venture is to go go find yourself someone's lot of Mage Knight or d, &D miniatures, Dream Blade. Get yourself a load of pre-painted plastic miniatures. They're so much easier to work with, in my opinion, than like the metal stuff, you know, Ralph mm. Partha and what have you. I, I've got boxes and boxes of you know metal miniatures that I've kind of tossed to the side. Because they're they're heavy, you know. If you drop them, they're gonna bend. The paint's gonna chip. You got to put all that work back into it, and eventually, when you've had it bend so much, it's just gonna break off, and now it's just you can't you can't fix that. So, I decided once I learned about you know the you know D and D releasing the plastic miniatures and Mage Knight, I was like, there's so much that I can do, and I I, I jumped in. Um, Head first when HeroScape came out. Uh, I know Nate played a lot of HeroScape. Nate and I played a lot of HeroScape over the years, and it was a really great board game, miniatures game that you know came out years ago. It's no longer in production. Uh, actually, la the last producer was actually Watts. So there's actually D and D HeroScape crossover, but this guy, he's he's your basic dragon that comes. In your box set for HeroScape. Now, no, he's not that color. He's not that color. The blue on here. I, I was trying to make a bunch of ice dragons, and I felt I painted way too many of them. So I decided, well, what am I going to do with the extras? So the wings actually come off nice and easy, and you can save the wings and do something more with them later. But you're presented with this nice little, you know, piece. And if I get it up close. You can actually see where it's got this hole. That's not really all that good if you want to have that. Now you yeah, could you have to fill, fill that in. You could pull out your milliput, which is a um, two-part compound that you can get that air dries to whatever you want. So you get you could mix the mix the stuff together. You know, as it says here. You know, silver gray two-part epoxy putty. So you figure out how much you need. You mix the stuff together, and then you can literally mold it into here, in into that hole. You know, take take out your your carving tools or your um, or your yeah your carving tools, and literally steeple in all the little grooves, and you could make yourself you know a giant lizard. Um, if you were going to do that, I would wind up carving down some of these horns, because if it's just a giant lizard, it doesn't need as massive a head as you see here. Epic dragon horns. Yeah. yeah. doesn't need all of that. So I would actually file down the top two to be, you know, little, and I would get rid of these these side guys entirely. But you decide, not, yeah, I decided you to do something different. Again, I bought a lot of HeroScape. I actually... Let's just leave it at that. I got a lot. So... Too much. <laughs> so I took a couple of these, and I literally cut along this line where you see that hole. So I cut straight through here. I took the body with the legs and the tail, and I tossed it behind me. For use later. For use later. Because um, I, I keep all of, my, all of my spare bits and parts. And here's my fi my finished product. I made a three-headed hydra. Now, you can compare. They are the same miniature. They have the same spine ridges. They have the same spiny tail. And each head has the exact same, uh, you know, spiky horns. And all I did was I took two head and neck from a Mimmering and molded them you know, carved the ends down to fit in the in the spot where it was a problem. And then I took the whole thing and I gave it a revised paint job. I put a dark green where you see the blue. I actually painted the light green to be a more like poison green. And then I I painted the, the spine ridge, the tail, and all the horns white. 
Yeah, like a kind of off-white bone. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I made some markings on, on the head that in this model, it's got nothing, but here it's got, you know, dark, you know, a dark or a light green and a purple to have it have a little bit more stand out. All told, start to finish, three to four hours worth of work. And I'm pretty happy with it. I've, I've known modelers who would spend a lot more time, you know, they, they would put shadings in the scales and they would make sure that there's putty work to, to, to absolutely mold every little crevice between the, the, the heads, but it's not necessary, you know. So I'm certain there's people who could nitpick through this and point out lots of flaws, but my, my attention to detail isn't super huge. But if yours is, that's the level that you can get to. It passes the dice rolling, like the dice rolling test. I'm rolling dice and I'm looking at this thing and I am scared of what I'm going to be facing. <laughs> so you and can... I'm not going to like, wait, wait, I think there's a little tiny crack all the way over there. You so, know, you're, you're, unless you're inspecting it up in your face, you don't see that stuff. So it's good enough for a gaming table. So you can plop this guy plop this guy down on on your battle mat and you take a dragon you turn it into a wingless hydra and you've got yourself you know one you know one, one awesome miniature um so I, I like i said i'm i'm happy with it um my, my next guy that i'm about that guy my next guy i'm going to talk about he has multiple elements designed you know here i actually have a component which you know for you D and D heads out there this is a Grick. I cut I cut off its body, um, you know, and and just took what you know some would consider the head, because as a monstrous head, that's pretty darn frightening in my opinion, especially when you incorporate it to other things. So the idea behind this creature, which you know, I'll get it in a little bit close, um, is designed to be some kind of you know, tentacled oozy monstrosity that has taken over a suit of armor. So I took, um, it's some kind of sun priest, sun drone from Dreamblade. The head literally was just a golden half dome. It, it didn't even have a full orbital head. It just, or, you know, domed over. So I cut that off, you know, cleanly and then drilled a hole or carved a hole down inside. I took my Grick and it had the, the full tubular base. And for the depth, I carved out along its side, uh, along the side of, of the miniature so that it would literally insert inside the, the armor. And the reason for doing that was it made a, a more secure bond between the two pieces when I glued it together. Yeah, I've seen this get dropped once or twice and it doesn't the, pop off. So. The, the dragon literally is just glued on. There's nothing connecting the pieces. There's nothing holding them in place. Whereas this, this connection has so many more contact points. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. So then I took the bottom of the, of the armor because he was a full, you know, upright figure and I carved off his legs from the knee down and shaved the the pieces down so that it would insert into another another creation so i took super sculpey um this is an oven bake clay that you can literally mold anything you want and then bake it in your oven and it will hold that temperature and it's 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 harder than your you know your D and D plastic, you know it it's it's pretty darn solid. Um, I'm I'm again I'm quite happy with this. And I decided I wasn't going to go into detail and try to make the the tentacle aspects that are on the Grick. I just made two protrusions to kind of show that it's got the ability to move and that it's really just this ooze. But I made a mistake when I baked when I baked it. It, it didn't hold its shape perfectly the way I wanted to, so now it wasn't fitting to an exact mold to the miniature that I wanted. So what I did was I pulled out, again, my, my milliput, my you know, two-part epoxy, and I wound up uh, fitting it into place so that if you actually can see, there's two different yellows there. Um, and and the, the the one part is the milliput, the other part is the is the sculpey. 
And then it's one, two, three, four ingredients, and we're still not done. It didn't it didn't give me the oozy quality that I wanted because it was just this bizarre head and this oozy body. I needed something to show down the rest of the miniature that that the ooze was literally the whole thing. So again, if you look close, you'll see these little yellow driplets that I made with hot glue. I literally just poured hot glue in and around the connection point and then painted those. So you get this nice little ooze demon, ooze whatever you want to call it, that's possessed this piece of armor. And again, I think, you know, if once you, you know, once you take out the oven baking time, I think he's, you know, tops two hours worth of work. Yeah, so not a lot of work, really unique piece, and, you know, only a couple miniatures had to bite the dust for it. <laughs> yeah, well, this one was only two, you know. Yeah. Th this guy, you know, I had to hack apart three miniatures. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm going to go into, you know, other, other miniatures, you know, th throughout this series, talk about, you know, the different pieces that I've used and, you know, you know, how I came to make some of the stuff. Yeah, we'll go over um, different techniques and uh, sh show them in action. You know, and and you know, to kind of put a nod to the to the gaming table, you know, when you make these miniatures, number one, you you can totally customize and say, well, I want to make a hero that looks like the guy that I'm currently playing, mm -hmm. um, and I did that with this guy, um, you know, or you as the DM can say, you know what, I want to make something that's just badass, and have the players not have any idea what it is. You throw this down on the table. It ain't in the monster manual, so they're not going to know what yeah. it is. They're like, um, so, totally and hard, perhaps. <laughs> so they're going to, the, 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 you know, your, your rules lawyers or the people who, you know, pour over the books, they're not going to know what you've made. And you, you can't turn it over and say, well, it says here that this is a uh, dire bat. Yeah, this is a dire bat. I don't think so, you know. <laughs> so the, the players aren't going to know. And, and, you know, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And it's something that, you know, Nate and I and our, our friend Matt and another friend of ours, Jim, we've had kit bashing get togethers. Yeah, I was thinking about that while you were doing you know, And, you know, you can. It's a lot of fun. You know, you take. Uh, I, I, I pulled these out. I actually think these are from little Pringles chips, or you can get other little containers, but. You can make project bins, or and or you could have these as paint trays, you know. But if you have something that's like, all right, well, I'm gonna put these guys in here because I'm gonna turn this into a project. Now, once you start cutting off the pieces, <laughs> they'll fit. They're gonna fit in there, and then you can stack it in there. I've got a box, you know, a box over here full of, you know, projects that. I or you know some of my friends little plastic uh, body parts <laughs> have decided oh well this is what we're going to work on and they've kind of been sitting there for a long time well I'll um, finally get to finish that cool <laughs> thing I was working on all those years ago oh, yes That's that guy with the one wing <laughs> yeah yeah um, he's, uh, he's moving on up but uh you know once you start hacking off the pieces that you want you know save save your spare parts make a spare parts bin because you never know when you're go going to find a use for that thing's leg or that thing's arm or you know just need a, a torso that you want to throw on somebody else's base to show that it's killed something and that worse you can make like 50 mongrel men <laughs> so uh with that uh you know put your comments below about what what you think while you're at it like share even subscribe you can also check the articles out over at nerdarchy.com so until next time stay, stay nerdy, nerdy.